Good morning, GCU. Welcome to chapel. Hope you guys are doing well. Hey, we got a few announcements before we jump in. Uh, tomorrow night is the gathering in the South Gym at 7 p.m. Hope you guys are there. We can worship together and hear from God's word. Uh, we're also doing this new service on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. called the Sanctuary. It's a more reflective, liturgical, contemplative service um, on seven, at 7 p.m. on Thursday night. So if that sounds interesting to you, come check us out and be a part of that. Uh, and then today we have uh, a spiritual formation workshop on how to study the Bible. And that's going to be going on at 2.30 in the prayer chapel um, today. Um, so if you're interested in that, come along. And then last announcement we have is if you'd like to help GCU shape a program for foster care and be a part of a focus group, we want to invite you to email the dean of students at gcu.edu um, if you have any interest in doing that. And next week in chapel, we have our very own Pastor Tim Griffin. Come on, let me get a, yeah. Pastor Tim is our very own university pastor, and he's also vice president of student affairs. Um, he'll be next week on September 27th. But today, we have a very special guest with us, Pastor Terry Mackey from Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church. <laughs> Pastor Mackey was born in Memphis, Tennessee. He received his Master's of Divinity from Princeton Theological Seminary and his doctorate degree in ministry from Memphis Theological Seminary where his concentration was in church growth and church planting. At present, Pastor Mackey is continuing Pilgrim Rest's involvement in the community by actively participating and maintaining a visible presence within the community here in Phoenix. Pastor Mackey is married to his sweetheart, Lynn Mackey, and they have three children, Micah, Timothy, and Barbara. So he's going to be bringing the word this morning. It's going to be amazing. I want to invite you right now to stand and let's invite God into this room, into this place. Let's prepare our hearts as we read from his word as a call to worship. I want to read from Psalm 100 this morning. It says, shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. He is who, uh, he is who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise him uh, for his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. Would you pray with me? Father, we welcome you in this place, God. We ask and pray that you would inhabit the praises of your people this morning as we lift your name on high, as we glorify you, as we honor you, as we sing our praise to you, God. Thank you so much for who you are and for your presence in this place, God. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship. Good morning. victory she does she does when all i see is a mountain you see a mountain and as i walk and as i walk through the shadow your love surrounds me covers me There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe. There's one body, come on. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. And oh God, the battle belongs to you. In every fear, I lay at your feet. I'll sing through the the battle belongs to you.
settled in our sin because your love has no boundaries. It's not scared of where we've been. God, I just thank you for your presence here today and the way you're moving in this canvas. We see it so evidently and I pray that you continue that and you continue that and we can just find surrender in you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much. You can go ahead and be seated. Let's praise God for this wonderful aggregation today. Amen. Let me ask you all a question. Has God done something for you today that you couldn't have done for yourself? If that's true, come on, let's give God great praise. No, 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 no. I, I thought I was at GCU. And the last time I was here, we blew the roof off this place. So let me ask you another question, and hopefully I get the response I'm looking for. Has God done something for you today that no man, woman, boy, or girl could do even if they tried? Well, come on, let's give him great praise. <laughs> Amen. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. We are so thankful for this precious privilege to come back to GCU and share with you my feeble preaching, but strong convictions about our Christ and him crucified. So glad to have my lovely wife with me today, Sister Lynn Mackey. Amen. Praise God for her. She is of the cream in my coffee. She's the frosting on my cake. She's the hot sauce in my fried chicken. Amen. <laughs> so I praise God for her today and, and several other of our members of here sprinkled throughout the room uh, from Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church. Our youth and young adult minister is here with us as well, Minister Alan Hunter. Amen. Y'all give him a hand as well. And at the conclusion of this sermon, certainly information will be available about our church on today. I want to take you to a beloved scripture that many of you have probably heard or you've recited at some point in your life. It's Psalm 23. Anybody know, ever heard about Psalm 23? Psalm 23. David says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name. Say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. 
But my favorite verse is that sixth verse that says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want to tag this sermon this morning, a change of scenery. Can you say that with me? A change of scenery. The only constant in life is change. Time will change. People will change. Situations will change. And if COVID-19 has taught us anything, we have learned that times certainly will change. We're arguing about whether people should wear masks or not wear masks. Even healthcare experts are still debating whether or not the booster will be effective and there are people still debating whether or not it's safe to receive the vaccine or not. This pandemic has certainly brought about change for all of us. But I want to tell you today that regardless of where you are on the issues, you should not allow the pandemic to cause pandemonium. That although we're going through these different changes, you can feel overwhelmed by the many changes we have to face in this life in which we live. But today I've come all the way from downtown Phoenix to tell you that you don't have to be overwhelmed because you are an overcomer in Jesus Christ our Lord. And Pastor Mackey, even when I feel overwhelmed, what do I need to do to stop me from feeling overwhelmed so I can become an overcomer when I'm dealing with the changes of life? What do I need to do? You need to look in a biblical passage where they are replete with changes of scenery. With the exception of verse 2, every particular verse in Psalm 23 has a scene change. The first one, David says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. Say scene one. Scene one, scene one. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. That's the first scene, but keep reading. He says, he leads me beside still waters. Now, I was in green pastures, but now the scenes have changed. I'm in still waters, and while in the still waters, it restoreth my soul. But then it goes to scene three. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I went from green pastures to still waters, and now I'm in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Scene four, verse four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I was in green pastures. Pastures. I moved to still waters. I was in the paths of righteousness, but now I'm in the valley of the shadow of death. But thank God I don't stay in the valley because the scenes change. Because in verse 5, it said, He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I was in the green pastures. I moved to the still waters. I moved to the path of righteousness for His name's sake. I moved to the valley, but now I'm sitting at the table and He shows out when I'm at the table because he prepared the table before me not in the presence of my friends not in the presence that of people who like me but he shows out in the midst of people who are my enemies watch this he keeps on showing up because in one hand he's preparing food on the table but in the other hand he's anointing my head with oil. Aren't you glad you have an ambidextrous God that, that he can... He can use both of his hands in order to bless you. He anoints your head with oil. Your cup runs over. But there's the last scene because in verse 6 it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Here it is. And I will dwell not in my house, not in your house, but I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We love this psalm, don't we? We love it. One reason is because of the many rewards 
we see in this psalm. And I want to show you the rewards in this psalm by using a myriad of ships in this passage. Did you know that there were many ships in Psalm 23? Let me show it to you. In verse 2, it's his lordship because it says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He didn't ask me if I wanted to do it. He's Lord. He's sovereign. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And it moves from his lordship to his leadership because as, as he makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. It moves from lordship to leadership. Look like I have some hardship because verse four, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, watch this, I will fear no evil because although I have his lordship, I have his leadership, look like I'm gonna have some hardship. Thank God for his companionship because he doesn't leave me in the valley by myself. He's walking with me every step of the way. And watch this, you all, it moves from his lordship to his leadership, look like I'm facing a hardship. Thank God for his companionship, but watch his showmanship because he shows out so good that he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil and my cup runs over, but watch this. It moves from his lordship to his leadership. Looks like I'm facing hardship. I have his companionship, but watch this, his showmanship, and then I get the partnership because the Bible says that as I'm walking surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life but here's the real good part because I move from his lordship to his leadership look like I'm facing hardship I have his companionship then I get his showmanship then I get his partnership but watch this then I get the championship <laughs> because I'm going to dwell I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. See, when you play basketball in the NBA, their championship is the Larry O'Brien trophy. If you play football, their championship is the Vince Lombardi trophy. If you play hockey, their championship is the Stanley Cup. But as a child of God, your championship is not a Stanley Cup. Your championship is not the Larry O'Brien trophy. Your championship is not the Vince Lombardi trophy. But your championship is that one of these days we shall live with Jesus forevermore. Can I get somebody to say amen? amen? But listen, I know it looks like I did all the ships, but there's one ship I left out because I've been quoting from Psalm 23 verses 2 through 6, right? I haven't touched verse 1. Verse 1 says, the Lord is my shepherd. Why did you leave that out, Pastor? Because before you can have his lordship and his leadership, look like you're facing hardship, got to have some companionship, his showmanship, his partnership and the championship. You can't get the championship and the partnership and the companionship and the leadership and the lordship if you don't have a relationship with him. Notice what David says in verse one. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. In order to use those personal pronouns, that means that David evidently has a relationship with the Lord. And please notice that this relationship is in verse 1. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Look at them and say neighbor. Don't, don't, don't be afraid. Look at them say neighbor, 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 neighbor. See, see now I'm, I'm trying to check to see if you're going to sleep on me. Look at them say neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Okay, what do I say? You ready for it? Say, neighbor, get your ships in the right order. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of ships out there. But you got to make sure that your relationship is first on the list. Do you know, watch this, watch this. Do you know 
that I can take verse 1 of Psalm 23 and I can place it at the very back of Psalm 23 and the psalm, what theologians call, you already, I'm going to give you a nice vocabulary word. You ready for it? The psalm would not lose what they called its iambic pentameter. Yeah, that's a nice word, isn't it? All it means is the psalm would not lose its rhythm. It, it, it won't lose its cadence. It, it still would make sense. Okay, let's try it. I'm, I'm going to recite Psalm 23. I'm going to put verse 1 at the very end and watch it still make sense. You ready? Ready? Verse 2. He maketh me. Lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff come from me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. It still makes sense. So, so if it makes sense, just as much to put it in the back as it does to put it in the front, why would David meticulously, why would David intentionally, why would David carefully put this in verse 1? It's because if it's in verse 1, he's trying to let us know that our number one priority is to have a relationship with the Lord. Because a lot of us want the rewards from the shepherd, but don't want to have a relationship with the shepherd. But in order for you to get the rewards from the shepherd, you need to have a relationship with the shepherd. I'm in Bible country. Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, these rewards, these other ships will be added unto you. But watch this. You can't seek the kingdom if you don't have a relationship with the king of the kingdom. You have to have a relationship with the Lord to receive the rewards from the Lord. When thinking about the relationship, have you ever been involved in a relationship with someone, watch this, that they didn't want you, but they wanted your stuff? Mm -hmm. I I'm about to step on some toes now. Yes, I am. Uh, uh. They didn't want you, but they wanted the stuff they could get from you. Where people were using you as a means to an end, and once you outlive your usefulness to them, they drop you like a bad habit. Uh, 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 young men, I, I want to say be very careful because there are some young ladies uh -huh, <laughs> out here that really don't want a relationship with you. They want the stuff they can get from you. Watch it, watch it. Uh, um, you, you, you calling her and you texting her and you trying to woo her over. And watch this. Uh, you find out that sometime they don't want you. They want to use you so they can go get some crab legs. And they want to use... They, they want to use you because... They want to go get a nice white linen dinner. But, but young ladies, you have to learn that you don't have to use anybody. You can go to the place and ask for one table for one. Can I get some help out there? You don't, you don't have to use anybody. Young ladies, I know you're looking at me saying now, what you going to say about them? Okay, I'm here. <laughs> young ladies. There are some young men out here that all they want is sex from you. <laughs> Hold on. Wait a minute. Now, all the young men that just said amen, what happened right there? <laughs> I'm 
telling you the truth. There are some young men that all they want to do is get in the bed with you. But young ladies, let me tell you something. If he needs a license to shoot, if he needs a license to drive, if he needs a license to fish, he needs a license to get next to you. <laughs> and listen, and listen, this license, the marriage license, has no expiration date on it. <clears throat> I know you all are saying, wow. Wow, Pastor Mackey, you gonna, you gonna cut us up like that? Yeah. <laughs> and I know you all are saying, man, that's a shame that people will use other people for their own self-aggrandizement to get what they want out of them. That, that's a shame. But God says, don't be surprised because you all treat me like that all the time. You want God to give you time, but when are you gonna give him his time? You, you, you want God to care about the things that you care about, but when are you going to care about the people he cares about, like the sick and the lame and the poor and the have-nots of this life? You want God to bless you, but God is wondering when are you going to open your mouth and bless him? And I wish I had about 3,000 loops in the place that can open up your mouth and bless God and say, Lord, I love you in this place. It's about having a relationship with him. I, I close with this story. I was an intern at the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church in 2016. While there, the pastor, the shepherd of that church, that's another term we use for, for pastors, the shepherd of that church says, Terry, I'm going to preach in Chicago. Would you like to go with us? I said, sure. But because we made my reservation so late, I was the last seat on the plane. But I wasn't complaining. I, I was glad to be flying and not walking. Can I get an amen right there? <laughs> and so while I'm getting ready to board the plane, there's so many people boarding this plane. I'm in the very back of the plane. And then someone gets on the public address system and says, Terry Mackey, would you please report to the front desk? And I begin to gather my things. I headed my way up to the front desk. And when I got to the front desk, the lady said, uh, Terry, do you know this man named Marcus Deep Cosby, who's the pastor of the church? I said, yeah, I've got a relationship with him. I'm on a first name basis with him. The lady says, what you don't know is Marcus Cosby, the pastor of the church where you're serving as an intern, the shepherd of that church. He is, for Continental Airlines, a platinum elite status member. Watch this, watch the benefit that he got. Which means that if he has a relationship with one of his friends on board, if there's an open seat in first class because he has so many points with us, we can give you an upgrade from the back seat all the way to first class. And guess what, you all? I was able to move from the very back of the plane, from the rear of the plane, and I was able to sit in first class. And the attendant came to me. She said, do you want some water? I said, no, ma'am. I said, no, I want Pellegrino. She said, do you want a, 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 a turkey sandwich? I said, no, ma'am, I want filet mignon. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Now, now watch this. Here's where it's going to get good. And while I'm doing all of this, while I'm playing like I'm rich in first class, uh, God began to whisper in my ear. He said that if you can get all of these benefits from knowing a shepherd of a church, uh, how many more benefits can you get from me when you make me the shepherd of your soul, when you make me the shepherd of your life? Is there anybody in GCU that can wave your hand and say, thank God, I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And because of that, 
because of my relationship with him thank God I've got his lordship I've got his leadership I've got his companionship I've got his showmanship I've got his partnership and one day I will be victorious and achieve the championship that the Lord has for me God bless you God keep you have a wonderful time the rest of the week please go out and get information about our church at Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church the Lord bless you and keep you is our prayer have a good afternoon <laughs>